Hello people of YouTube, how are we all doing? Hope everyone is well. My name's Danny, this is Crafty D Sculpting, and in this week's video we're going into the world of Warhammer 40k. And if you haven't guessed already, we're doing an orc. Yep, that's right. I plucked up the courage to finally do the orc that I wanted. I managed to do the face. As you know fully well that I usually shy away from faces, but we've gone through this time. Anyway guys, let's get into the video, but before we do, please hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help me out massively on the algorithm. But yeah, we've got some more plans to do some more 40k videos. Um, you'll have to tune in to find out what they're going to be. But until then guys, let's get into the video. Right, so as usual, we're starting off with the armature. As you can see here, I've got some Freemail aluminium wire, we've got some floral wire, we've cut some pieces of desired length and we're going to strap them together using the floral wire. Now we're just going to snip off the excess and we can start shaping as needed. Now we're doing the orc as we all know and he's got a bit of a weird shape on him so we're going to spend a bit of time just trying to get the legs right how we want the body to actually stand up, cut off on the excess, there we go, now we can get a trusty bit of wood, drill the holes and plonk him in place. Right, now this is what I'm using for reference, it's just one of the um, Warhammer 40k models of an orc. Now back to the armature. Now we're going to use this bent bit of wire which we're going to strap over the back like that. Because his head is in a slightly weird position, not usually at the top of the shoulders, it's more coming off of the front of the shoulders. Anyway, now that's done, we can get on with the tin foil. Going to bulk up the majority of the body with the tin foil. I'm not going to bore you with too much of it, but we're just going to show you how we're going to do one of the legs. Just wrapping it up, building up the bulk of his leg. And with the power of editing, we can just complete him like that. Right, now we're going to move on to some Super Sculpey. Majority of this one's made out of Super Sculpey. We do use some cosplay for some more delicate pieces later on. If anyone see the video at the beginning and they're into their 40k stuff, I highly recommend you check out Astral Infer Infernum Productions. Bit of a mouthful of Dame to say, but we got there in the end. He does some brilliant AI work, mainly a 40k stuff, but he does loads of other stuff as well. Definitely worth a look. He's a very, very talented guy. But now we've got the bulk of the body made up like that with the Super Sculpey. We can put him in the oven and he's nice and firm now. Right, now we've got that part done, we can move on to the liquid clay. Did that all over him. Once we've got that on, we can then start with the more bulking up and getting some clothes on. So we're going to start with the trousers. Just working it all in. Making sure he's got plenty of bulk in his legs. It's a bit of a chunky lad, this one. Now just adding paces on as we need and then just blend it all in. There we go, getting it all smoothed in. And once we've got that done, we can move on to giving some creases in his trousers, just using the back end of a paintbrush. We can do various of these, mainly behind the knees and around the ankles and anywhere else. Right, now we can move on to bulking up some of the muscle work on the top of his body. And we're starting off with the shoulders. And his back. Getting all that in, we leave the majority of the arms for the moment, we'll come back to that later on. Just want to get the shoulders done so we can start getting more clothes on. And once we've built up the shoulders, we can move on down the body a little bit more. Start building up that muscle work. There you go, plenty of days in the gym for this one. Wish it was that easy in real life, eh? Right, now that's done, we can move on with more clothes. Now this one's going to be wearing a waistcoat. So you just cut this off a of camera, and then we can just get that worked into place. Cut off any excess. And get everything blended in. 
there we go looking good now what we're going to do is a bit of an awk and he's a bit of a wide boy this one so what we're going to do is make some nooks and crannies and creases and cuts in his clothing he's hard at war all the time this one so for any background noise on this video um, kids are currently off of school because it's the holidays at the moment where we are and now we've got that done we can work on to some more bits and pieces um, this one's going to be like a waist belt going round and then we're going to add a clasp where everything's holding the belt together now, as I say I've used various different models and pictures as reference for this one I haven't just gone with the one small model that I showed you earlier I have used other pictures and stuff like that just to get a general idea of what an orc should be and don't really play much 40k but I do have a few models of certain bits and pieces as I like to mess around with different ideas and some of the models actually do give you a very good representation of how I should be making some of my models do want to be making some more 40k videos in the future and I think the next one might be the scaven, the rats so let us know down below guys whether you'd like to see that and what else you'd like to see in future videos as you can see now we're moving on to his feet and we're going to get him some booties and there we go there's the boots coming along nicely I'm just shaping them with this spoon tool once we've done that we can then wash everything down with isopropyl or get rid of any fingerprints and marks and we can get them back in the oven now that's done we can get on with the head now the head took me three or four attempts before I actually got what I was actually happy with um, you usually do shy away from making faces and don't mind anything with a mask but this is the first time that I've actually done a full face and uh, yeah I'm rather pleased with the way it came out in the end as I say, it did take me a few attempts but yeah, we got there in the end so starting off with the eyes getting the bulk where we need it then put the nose on coming back to around the eyes and more shape work before then bulking up around the bottom of the face and then getting the mouth in but yeah, as I say, this took <laughs> a good few hours before I was happy just using various different tools to open up his mouth now adding on the bottom lip opening it all up and smushing everything together where it needs to go and then what we've done was we pre-baked the teeth and then we're just going to slot them into place right now we've done that we've built up his cheekbones and then we've working on his ears and we've just done some little triangles stuck them in place and then we're just going to push through and make everything how it should be once we've done that we've just got a small bit of clay which we've just plonked in place as a neck and then put his head on and we can shape everything after All right now we are working on his shoulder padding now it's supposed to be like a bit of fur that goes on and then a bit of leather over the top of that now we're adding the strap work on, holding everything down and I'm just using a little bit of um, liquid clay just to make sure everything bonds nicely so I don't want to put too much pressure on and I don't want to smush it all into what I've already done so once we've done that we can add some bits and pieces on uh, in this case it's like little teeth or horns or something like that whatever you want to call it and we're just going to work them in before we get on with his staff now with the staff he's going to have the Yorks logo on there which I've actually made a template of and we'll just put that over the top and we're just going to cut around that to make it nice and easy for myself right now we've done that we can move on to some paint unfortunately I forgot to press record when I was doing the hands but I'm sure you've seen me do hands before alright so now we're just working his body all in different various greens we'll build up the colour later on with that but once we've done that we can get on with all the other colours we've done black and that for his clothes and now moving on to various different browns and greys for the rest of him everything does get a bit of a black wash later on as you can see I've blacked out any metal work before I actually put the uh, metallics on 
just makes them pop a little bit better. Now for his eyes we've just got one of these ball styluses and we've worked up from a bigger ball stylus down to a smaller ball stylus just to get all the different colours in his eyes. As we said earlier about the black wash, we're adding that on now. Just washing off any excess until we get our desired look. Black washing the rest of his body now. And it just finishes it off, I think. Gives it that more worn and dirty look. And go taking off all the excess. Now we can move on to the base. Now I've just cut a piece of wood, drilled, drilled some holes for him to slot into, got some tin foil and roughed them up into these balls. And we're just going to hop all these down in place before we go over with some clay. Now we've got all that in place, we can take another bit of tin foil, we scrunch it up and we're just going to run it all over the clay to give it that sort of rocky effect. Now we can paint. Now we've gone over with like a very dark grey black to start off with and we're going to build up lighter greys mainly with dry brushing. 